haven't seen the movie, if you've seen the trailer, they show a little bit of him dancing. You're a great dancer. You actually, that little scene where you're dancing, yeah, you're a good dancer. I used to be a, a pop locker when I was in elementary school. Were you? Yeah. It's actually one of the reasons why I didn't get an agent because I auditioned and I had like a punk rock haircut and I dressed like a little, you know, street dancer and they rejected me. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I disagree with that because I met you, I think you were like 16 years old, and you had just done This Boy's Life, which, yeah. was, which was your first film, really. It was on Hollywood Boulevard, right? I yes, remember that. we were at an after party at like the Chinese theater or something. And, and I'm telling you, you were so, you told me, I just, I just was listening to you talk, and I thought, you are so special and charming, and then you told me you just finished that film, and I had never seen you in anything, but I just knew you were gonna be somebody because you were so charming. Then you did What's Eating Gilbert Grape, and he was amazing in that. And I feel like I discovered you. You feel like you discovered me. I, I claim stake on you. I think I'm responsible for your, for your career. Well, I'm... <laughs> I've always been a big fan of yours. Well, thank ever you. since I first met you. So thank, thank you. you very much. But really, you're I mean, and this this performance in this movie is um, I I really want to say it's your best performance I've ever seen. And you've oh, done some you. great movies. But in in this movie, your performance is outstanding. And thank you're nominated you. for Golden Globe, well deserved. <laughs> I hosted the Oscars in 2007, and you were there in the front row. You were nominated for Blood Diamond. I'm, mm -hmm. not, um, I'm hosting again this year, and I, I pray I'm looking out there and seeing you in the audience for this, because you deserve to be there. You're and, very sweet. And, uh, uh, or, or just come anyway. <laughs> I might, yeah. I might. Yeah. Even, even if you don't get nominated as a seat filler, I just, just want to see I you there. I love those seat fillers. Yeah, just be there. And literally, as soon as you leave the bathroom, somebody just scoots in and goes, excuse yeah, me, and they're they just sit, right there. sit right down. Yeah. All dressed up. And All right, so tell everybody, this movie, uh, you produced it as well, right? Yes. So you took a long time to make it. Look, I, I'd been, I was fascinated by this book. I mean, Jordan Belfort uh, looks at this as a, as a cautionary tale. He, He's sort of reflecting on his wild, debaucherous, hedonistic days on Wall Street where he was you know, consumed by greed and excess. But he was so candid and honest about it, and I really wanted to put this up on screen because in a lot of ways, it felt like a reflection of, of the, the time that we were living in. I mean, really anything goes in this film. It is absolutely wild. And you know, Martin Scorsese and I decided to really pull no punches and really go for it. Yeah, it's, uh, but I can't believe that everything you see, and when you see this film, it's, first of all, it's so good, and, and you and Jonah Hill are great together, but the scene when you take uh, Qualudes and, and, and Qualudes. I, I'm from New Orleans. <laughs> we, we said Qualudes. Um, but I'm, ki I'm not kidding. I know what they're called. <laughs> I'm from New Orleans. Um, so, Quaaludes. So when you take the Quaaludes and, and you have to make your way down the steps to the car, it is, it is genius how you do that. Like, and, and how many takes did you have to do? God, we worked on that whole sequence for a week. We want, one of my favorite sequences in uh, Goodfellas is where Ray Liotta's like spinning, the, uh, mixing the marinara, he's doing drugs, he's got the helicopters circling around him. His, his nanny wants to take her hat and the cops are coming after him. We wanted to do kind of a film within a film. So we really worked really hard on this Quaalude sequence where essentially Donnie has a botched money deal who's, who's played by, by Jonah Hill. And to apologize for that, he gives me these incredibly powerful Quaaludes. I simultaneously find out that my house is being bugged by the FBI and I gotta get back home to him because he's on the phone with Switzerland and it turns into this sort of insane sequence. And it was probably the most wild thing I've ever done in my entire life. Jonah Hill and I looked at each other and said, how are we allowed to do this? How are we allowed to get paid to do this for a living? It was just insane. It was, and, and, and just to take that much time to try to crawl downstairs and to try to open <laughs> a car door that opens up mm -hmm. and for your foot to get caught on that door every single, I mean, that just was hilarious. I appreciate that. I mean, I, I, you know, it all resulted in this insane p sequence at the end where Jonah uh, decides to stuff ham into his mouth as well, and he crashes into a plate glass table, and we were doing the CPR sequence, and, you know, the big challenge that day, we had to do 70 takes because they couldn't get this ham to stick on my face. 
and they had to put KY jelly, and uh, there was literally a guy there behind this giant wig with a plastic spoon just flicking ham on my face <laughs> all day long as I'm doing this insane sequence. But it was, it was al almost, it was one of the most surreal things I've ever done in, 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 in my entire career. Because, well, I know your friends, you're both friends anyway, yeah. and, and there's a lot of impro improvisation in there, so that must have been, there must be takes where you just couldn't make it through. I mean, the whole the whole film was like that, and he's one of the greatest improvisational actors I've ever gotten to work with. He's a he's a real genius and a good guy. And he he really came to me and said, "Look, I know what this world is like. I know what these people are. There's no one that should play this role except for me." And and I immediately told Marty about that, and he hired him on the spot. It was fantastic. His clothes, it, what he's wearing, his his it, giant just, white teeth, just teeth, everything. It's <laughs> It's great. It, I just, I really enjoyed the film, and I really enjoyed uh, both of your performances. But I really think it's it's the best I've ever seen you be. It, Thank there's you. so many levels and layers of it. Of uh, it's just, it's fun to watch. Hi, Leo. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? Those clips were giving me horrible flashbacks. I was gonna. Well, yeah. we'll talk about that in a second. That first of all, congratulations. This movie is so fantastic, and you're nominated for SAG Award, uh, Golden Globe, and I'm positive you will be nominated, if not win, the Academy Award. So, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and that's saying a lot, because there's some great performances sure out there, are. some, some other people, not to give it, it, no disrespect to the other performances. But so this movie, uh, The Revenant, uh, explain what it is to everyone. It's set in the 1820s in America in a very interesting time period when, uh, when it's a lawless territory. They, the Oregon Territory was not really America yet. It hadn't been a part of America. It was, so it was kind of like the Amazon, indigenous cultures there. You had a lot of French and English fur trappers. But this, this is the first sort of move out west to extract the natural resources from untouched landscapes. And I play a fur trapper. A true a, story. A true story. It's kind of a campfire legend that's been told for years because of this epic survival story that Hugh Glass went through. He got mauled by a bear, buried alive, and then crawled through hundreds of miles of freezing cold territory to reap revenge on the people that did him wrong. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's amazing. I mean, and the, the scene where the bear uh, mauls you is, is so incredibly r real. Yeah. I mean, it's so realistic. And, and then after that, well, for the whole movie, it's and Alejandro who directed Birdman. I mean, you saw that scene just now where, I mean, how that was even shot. I don't know how he shot that sequence where you're in these rapids. I don't know how he did a lot of the stuff in this movie. It's one of the most interesting films I've ever been a part of because we really submerged ourselves in nature, in the natural world, in the elements, and we spent, we spent nine months there, and every day was very unique because we rehearsed all, all day long, and then we had this hour and a half where we had to capture everything in natural light. But it was uh, quite possibly the most you know, difficult professional undertaking that I've ever had, and I, I think I can say the same for everyone that was involved in the movie. It was just a very rough shoot, but the end result is something that is very captivating. You really feel like you're immersed in this world. There's very little CGI. Everything that you see in the movie is the the bear. I mean, I, I'm assuming that's CGI, but it does not look like it. It's so real. But when you say natural light, that's another thing I don't think I, people understand. I mean, movies. You're sitting around waiting in a trailer for them to to change yeah. angles, and everyone's lit. And the director only wanted to shoot natural light, yeah. so you only had that one hour a day to shoot. It was like a Saturday Night Live episode every single day, but nothing was funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was like live theater, we'd prepare, and it was this constant tension to pull off what we had to pull off in this hour and a half. And did you, I mean, were there, like, if you're rehearsing all day for that one shot, were there days where then you had to redo that shot because it didn't work out? Uh, we went months and months and months over it. Plus, we had, because we were shooting in the natural conditions, we had, you know, freak weather systems. Wow. Climate that's... change is happening, it's real. That's, 2015 yes. 2015 being the hottest year in recorded history, I mean, we, we saw it. Firsthand, we saw what one or two degrees can do 
to shift, you know, the entire topography of a landscape. It's it's really really frightening to to hear that. And but but when it was freezing, I think people will get confused with global warming, like you know, uh, like well, it's cold, so it mustn't be happening. Right. You know, it's like it's just that it's so it's crazy. It's freak weather patterns yes. in both directions. So when it was freezing, how free? Like because you're in the water a yeah. lot, and and you can first of all, I know you, and <laughs> I still believed you were that guy in the movie. I mean, you were so good. When I'm watching that movie, I just think, you, I don't even think you're Leo. I just think you're that guy, which is a, a testament because it, you just you just disappear into that character. And you. you're freezing cold in there. I can tell because it's freezing cold. I think, I think the cold, <laughs> I think the coldest day was something like 40 below. I'm not here to complain about the whole process, but it was one of the toughest things well, I've ever had to do. No, no, Portia and I were looking at it going, why would he do that? Why would you take that? <laughs> Who in their right mind would go, I mean, I, I, you're, you know, it's great to take on a role and take on a character, but everything was torture. I mean, there are, first of all, it was six hours of, but the beard was, that was your beard. That was my beard. Which, I lived with it like a relationship for a year and a half. <laughs> I don't know how you had a relationship with that beer. That it was, you looked like a crazy person. Um, then you're like you're crawling through the wilderness. You're yeah. you, because you were mauled by a bear and yeah. you're buried alive. So there are scenes of you just crawling, and I'm thinking that alone must have been just all of it. It was just it was. It, it was a doozy. Yeah, it, it was a doozy, it was a and doozy. you did. Uh, it's going to do very, very well for you because it's so amazing. I, I'm very proud of this whole film. I think it's one of the most unique films people are going to see in modern history, and some of the sequences that they've pulled off in this movie, I think, are going to be groundbreaking. Just even the opening sequence. I, I mean, all of it. It's just, it's a beautiful. It's like, it's so incredible. Uh, I, I agree with you. It's like a, a very important film that everyone will remember. So I've known you for a long, long time. I met you when you were just a, a, a young boy who had just done, uh, I think, your first movie. And so you always, you knew you wanted to act your whole life, right? Yes, I did. From, uh, it was some of my earliest memories. I remember uh, dancing in front of my entire family, doing impersonations. I remember going up in front of class if there was an extra 10 minutes and, uh, you know, doing kind of, it was a way to get attention as a little kid. That's what kind of impersonations did you do? Everything, everything. Like you do impersonations? You on do... occasion, yeah, I do an impersonation. <laughs> I don't have one, I don't have any ready at okay. <laughs> my pocket right now. But yeah, I did a lot as a kid. Yeah. Mainly of like my parents' friends and stuff like that. Because you, I mean, I think one of the, you did uh, This Boy's Life, is that what, and, oh, yeah. and, and then you did What's Eating Gilbert Grape, which yes. you were amazing in. I mean, you were so, so great at that. And that was like, I think your, was that your second film or something? It was 16 turning 17 for that. Amazing, amazing. So you, you've always been like a daredevil, but um, you've done, I think I've talked to you about you swim with sharks, or you have. Yeah. And you jump out, out out of an airplane. Yeah. On a regular basis, or will you? I only did that once. once. Will you do it again? When you when both parachutes don't open, you tend to not go repeat something like that. Yeah. What are you talking about? Well, then how'd you get down? I had, <laughs> I jumped out of the airplane, and then my first chute didn't open. They cut. It's tandem, so somebody's on your back. They cut that line. We started free falling towards Earth, and that's when you get the you know, eight by 10 glossies of your whole life flashing before your eyes. <laughs> and then the second one was tangled as well. And I saw my friends sort of popping off with their, you know, their parachutes and I'm still plummeting towards planet Earth. <laughs> and, and then that was tangled for about a good, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds. And then he untangled it. And then he told me, oh, you're probably gonna break your legs now because this, we're going too fast. So it was one of the worst experiences of my life and I'll never do it again. And did you break your legs? I did not break my legs. Wow, so he's whispering in your ear, or yelling in your ear. He was screaming. He screaming. Your... <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna break your legs. You're gonna break your legs. <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't hear you! <laughs> wow, that's just horrible. So what's the scariest thing you've ever done? I was on a plane to Russia and the engine exploded. I was looking out the window and the entire engine just turned into a fireball. It was right after Sully had that incident happen to him where the geese flew into right. both engines. Right, and he landed on the yeah. river. This happened in, in one of the engines and I was the, was, I was the only person there that seemed to see this, but it was a flaming fireball. 
and it was all Russian um, passengers, and I kind of felt like I'd already died and gone to heaven because no one said anything. <laughs> and I was screaming at the top of my lungs, saying, what the hell is going on here? And these people just kind of looked back to me, and the, and the stewardess came out and said, we seem to have a, a slight problem here. <laughs> and the Russian guy finally said, what is the problem? And I said, well, we, we lost one of our engines. <laughs> And he, said, <laughs> he goes, how many engines did we have? <laughs> she goes, well, we had two. <laughs> and now we have one. <laughs> and uh, we proceeded to say, that is not, that is not good. That is not good. <laughs> and we basically dumped fuel for 45 minutes and did an emergency landing, and all our tires exploded, and there was 100 different ambulances there, and it was on CNN. And, that was another bummer. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. It, that's incredible. I feel like I should write a book now. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, I'm going to write it <laughs> now.